Hi, this is Dr. Sridhar, active with another video session on DC motor. In this video session, I am going to discuss about principle of operation of DC machines and especially DC motor and what are the back EMF and what are the expression for induced EMF generated in the DC machine. And in addition to that, we are going to discuss about the various types of DC motors. So these are the broad areas we are going to discuss in today's video session. First, everyone knows that every current carrying conductor produces its own magnetic field. So DC motor is a transducer, it is a electric machine which converts electrical energy into the mechanical energy. So basically through which terminals that electrical energy can be supplied to the DC motor. That is a uh, very, very important point. So that electrical energy, which is nothing but the input source that will be applied to the armature of the DC motor. So whenever some amount of electrical energy, more exactly electrical current passes through the armature conductors, every current carrying conductor, as we know that produces its own magnetic field, whenever armature conductors allows some amount of current through it, it produces its own magnetic field. Now, as per Ampere's right hand thumb rule, everyone knows that the direction of the magnetic field which will be produced by the current carrying conductor and majorly it, it will be influenced by the direction of the current. Suppose if any current carrying conductor, if it is having, if it is represented with a cross mark, now inside a circle, if any cross mark is represented, it means that that particular electrical conductor or that particular conductor carries the electrical current. Now that current direction is, it is leaving from us. So it is entering into the board or it is entering into the paper. So it is, which is moving from us is nothing but that will be represented with a circle. Inside that circle, there will be a cross mark. So that is the representation of one conductor which carries the current from us. So one more conductor, sometimes it can be represented with some dot. So inside a circle, if some dot is represented, then that is a current carrying conductor which carries the current towards us. So that is the two way of representing the current carrying conductors. So normally if you are taking the first one, now if any current carrying conductor, if it is represented with the crossed one, so it means this is a conductor carries the current. Now the direction of the current is from completely it is moving from us. So it means now if it is entering into the board, then what would be the magnetic field? Now, what will be the magnetic field direction? So, that will be explained uh, well with the help of Ampere's right hand thumb rule. So, you have to keep our thumb of right hand in the direction of the current flow. So, if, you're, if you could arrange your right hand thumb in the direction of the current flow, then what would be the magnetic field? So, magnetic field is nothing but the, that will be represented by the remaining fingers of our right hand. So, in which directions you can place your finger that will be represent that will be the representation of the magnetic flux so that with the help of that particular uh, ampere's right hand thumb rule we can easily identify the magnetic field direction so suppose if you could keep our right hand thumb in the direction of the magnetic uh, current carrying conductor so the remaining finger so what would be the direction of the magnetic field so this is nothing but the direction of the magnetic field so it is nothing but the so this is clockwise direction this is the direction of the current uh, flux is nothing but the clockwise. And one more conductor is, now if any conductor carries the current towards us. So just try to keep our right hand thumb in the direction of the current. So what will be the direction of the magnetic field? So the magnetic field direction is nothing but that will be indicated by the remaining fingers of our right hand. So that is anti-clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction. So why I am talking about these uh, magnetic field directions means Especially with the help of these magnetic fields and current, current carrying conductors only, we are going to discuss about the principle of operation of DC, DC motors. Now, if we are uh, very uh, comfortable with uh, the marking of this particular direction of the magnetic field and that magnetic field direction, it will be influenced by the current carrying uh, conductors and more especially the direction of the current is the very, very important parameter with the help of that only we are going to identify the 
direction of the magnetic field produced by that particular conductor so in view of that uh, so in our for better understanding so in the beginning only let us talk about ampere's right hand thumb rule with the help of that ampere's right hand thumb rule we can easily identify the direction of the magnetic fields now this will be applied for any conductor if the conductor is having some current through it so that is about the ampere's right hand thumb rule and so here the direction of the force suppose now in the magnetic field let us assume the magnetic field it can be produced by keeping some north pole and south pole as shown in the figure here so this is the north pole and this is the south pole now here in between or especially in the magnetic field if you could keep the any conductor and if you are allowing some current through it so it is nothing but indirectly we are giving electrical energy as the input so electrical energy as the input so what do you mean by that why we are giving electrical energy that is the first parameter so first important point is what is the necessity why we are giving uh, electrical energy as the input means now we are discussing about the dc motor dc motor is a converting device or conversion device or more exactly this can be called as a transducer which converts electrical energy into the mechanical energy so if you want to see the conversion of the electrical quantity into the mechanical quantity first of all we had to give or we had to supply some some amount of electrical energy to the dc motor so to which terminals that electrical energy is to be supplied because in the dc motor or more exactly in the dc machine there are two major parts are there one is the starter field or uh, plugs that is nothing but the field coils are there that those are placed on a static piece of apparatus this is nothing but which will not revolve with the, as uh, in the direction of the armature or by applying anything it will not revolve so that is nothing but that is called as a starter s t a t o r because this this is a device or this is a portion on which we are going to place or we are going to uh, keep few magnetic poles so on the outer surface of the magnetic poles we are going to keep some field coils so this is nothing but it is not a rotating parts so that's why this is called as a starter so in the starter majorly what happens this is the starter is nothing but this is the place now from which or with the help of this starter frame we are going to generate or we are going to produce the magnetic field in the motor so the magnetic field means who will supply this magnetic field so with the help of whom we are going to develop the magnetic field means by keeping north pole and south pole so it means generally in the starter we are going to place the north poles and south poles those are nothing but the permanent magnets or sometimes we can induce this magnetic poles now in order to if uh, space or if the size of the machine is a criteria if the size of the machine is a major concern for us in that cases generally people are going to induce the magnetic poles so that physically we need not keep any magnetic poles in the machine so whatever it may be whether we are inducing the magnetic poles or we are going to keep the magnetic poles physically so it is not a matter here but generally that will be the solo responsibility of the starter frame so starter is the basically what happens starter is not a rotating part and starter is a place where we are going to keep permanent magnets or induced poles so that is nothing but from this particular frame we are going to generate or we are going to produce the required amount of magnetic field in the dc motor and one more uh, major component in the dc motor is armature armature is nothing but on that armature we are going to keep the armature conductors now that armature is a rotating body whereas the starter is a stationary device it will not revolve but rotor is nothing but uh, sorry uh, armature is nothing but it is a rotating part sometimes this armature is also called as a rotor so it is continuously revolves and this will be coupled with a mechanical shaft so this is nothing but majorly in any dc machine now majorly there there will be two parts starter part and the rotor part and rotor is also called as a armature and the nature of the rotor is nothing but it is continuously rotates in the direction of the applied force or suppose if the forces are automatically generated because of the interaction of the various magnetic field so in that particular direction our armature is going to revolve or it will be rotated with certain amount of speed so that's why any dc machine either it may be a generator or motor whatever it may be there will be two major parts so here this north pole and south pole is nothing but this is nothing but our magnetic fields and this is nothing but it will comes under our starter frame so this one and this one both will be as a part of the starter frame and what about this one this is nothing but it is a 
armature conductor. So what is this armature conductor? If any interaction of magnetic fields are intentionally, if you can, if you want to rotate this armature conductor, you can do it. Now that's what we are going to examine how that uh, DC motor or how that electrical energy is converted into the mechanical energy. So that is our major intention here. So the required amount of magnetic field, it can be produced with the help of this north pole and south poles. So this north pole and south poles, physically we are going to place on the starter frame. That is the first point. And second point is we were provided with electrical energy because now we had to examine how much of electrical energy, how this electrical energy is converted into the mechanical energy. So input is our uh, electrical energy will be the input and to which part of the DC motor or to which exactly to which portion of the DC motor that electrical energy as an input we are going to apply means now that how much of electrical energy you have, how much of electrical energy you want to convert into the mechanical energy. Let us take that electrical quantity, let us apply that electrical quantity as an input to the armature conductors. So uh, suppose if you have 230 volts of electrical voltage or uh, suppose 100 volts of electrical voltage, if you want to convert proportionally uh, some mechanical energy in proportion to the 100 volts or 230 volts, whatever it may be, that voltage source or that particular voltage as a supply, you have to connect it to the armature coils or armature conductors. So that is nothing but whenever that armature conductors are coupled or armature conductors are connected electrically with external voltage source, what happens? We can find a closure path. So that closure path is sufficient for establishment of some amount of current in proportion to the supply voltage and the impedance in that particular loop. So directly what happens? There will be a current. It will be flows through the armature conductor. So initially this armature conductor is not a rotating one and this magnetic uh, field coils or magnetic poles are also not rotating. Only we are giving that electrical inputs or electrical energy as the input to the armature. So now let us recollect. Now what we discussed in the beginning of this particular video session. So as per Ampere's right hand thumb rule, every current carrying conductor produces its own magnetic field. So whenever this armature conductor carries some amount of current through it, now based on the direction, based on the direction of this particular current, now definitely there will be a magnetic field. Now means in the space between this north pole and south pole, now we can see or we can examine two different types of fluxes. One flux is because of the armature current and one flux is because of the field current. So there will be two different types of fluxes. We can see in the space provided for the magnetic field or that is the area or area between the starter frame and the rotor frame. Now in, in between the starter frame and the rotor frame or in between the starter frame and the armature, now there will be two different types of fluxes. One flux is nothing but the field flux. So this field flux is also called as a main flux. Main flux. This is generally represented with the pi. And next one is because we are allowing some amount of current to flow through the armature. So there will be an armature flux. So this is nothing but the pi gain. So in the space provided or in the space available between the starter and the armature, now we can see two different types of fluxes. So let us assume one current. So the main magnetic field, if it is traveling, let us assume this is our north pole and this is our south pole. So let us assume this is nothing but direction of the main magnetic field. So this is the direction of our main magnetic field. Let us assume this is nothing but the pi. Right. So in between this north and south pole, we have some conductors. Which conductors? Armature conductors. Let us represent this armature conductor as a cross which is close to the north pole can be represented with the north as uh, a crossed conductor and one conductor which is close to the south pole can be represented as a dotted ones. So it means again this crossed mark conductor and the dot mark conductors internally these two are connected in series. That is beyond our scope only how these uh, electrical energy is converted into the mechanical energy that's what we are going to study here. So this is the crossed mark conductor. So whenever you are allowing some current to flow through this particular conductor and this conductor is nothing but it is represented with the crossed one. So this is the current carrying conductor or this is the conductor. If it carries some amount of current through it. Now 
this is let us assume this is our north pole and this is our south pole so this is our armature so one conductor it can be represented as a cross and one conductor we can represent as a dot and few of them with respect to some let us draw one reference axis now this is indirectly we are going to divide this armature into two equal halves and these conductors are with crossed marks all the conductors above the reference axis can be marked as a crossed one and these are nothing but the dotted ones so only what exactly what do you mean by this crossed and dotted means as we just now we discussed that based on the direction of the current only some of the current uh, means some of the conductors means just suppose let us 50 number of conductors are there if the armature is uh, having 50 number of conductors then 25 number of conductors will be represented as a crossed and remaining 25 number of conductors are represented with the dot it means so throughout this armature if you could observe throughout this armature if you are placing n number of conductors half of the n number of conductors will be represented as or it will carry the current into the board and remaining half of the number of conductors will carry the current towards us so again in what way these all these n number of conductors are connected means seriously connected and if based on the requirement based on the output we, uh, we are going to expect from that particular machine and all the z number of conductors can be grouped into a number of parallel paths so anyhow that we have discussed so many times in our previous videos now here the now here it is very clear that how the distribution of the conductor can be taken place so this is nothing but the distribution of the conductor here now let us examine only one conductor and here this is uh, the main uh, major uh, main flux is coming from this north pole like this now the main flux is coming like this it is moving in the downward direction and this is nothing but our cross mark conductor so it means it carries the current it this particular armature conductor carries the current into the board so which is uh, which carries the current and it is in the leaving kind of thing so what could be the direction of this magnetic field produced by this armature conductor so the current direction is nothing but in the clockwise direction so this will be the direction of the magnetic field so here exactly if you could observe here in this particular portion one main major magnetic flux is coming like this and this armature flux is coming like this so at this particular portion you can see some interaction of the magnetic fields so because of this interaction what happens so all this number of armature fluxes will try to pull this armature conductors in the perpendicular direction so because of this now all the armature conductors because of the interaction of the two different magnetic fields that is nothing but armature flux and the main flux now because of the interaction of these two different types of fluxes this armature conductor it will be pulled in the particular direction so what could be the direction of the armature conductor is going to travel or is going to experience some forces means now that is in the, it is in the direction of the circumferential lens or circumferential direction towards or with respect to the armature core so it means uh, what happens with this simple discussion we can say that whenever you are allowing some current to, to flow through this armature conductor the armature conductor will experience a force so what is the direction of that force that can be explained with the help of fleming's left hand rule so here let us keep our uh, left hand in the direction of and here our uh, forefinger you arrange in the direction of the magnetic field and our middle finger it is in the direction of current carrying direction or in which direction the conductor is carrying the current in parallel to that current let us keep our uh, middle finger and next one is forefinger it is in the direction of the magnetic field then our thumb represents the force experienced by that particular conductor so in that particular direction our conductor our armature conductor is going to move so this is the direction of the force now the direction of force is clearly represented here so it means now the conductor that armature conductor starts experiencing different uh, types of forces now this is not only restricted to a conductor this will be happened at all the armature conductors so in that all the armature conductors will experience a force in a particular direction so because of that what happens now once the moment of inertia of that particular armature overcomes then from there onwards our armature starts rotating so it means 
suppose let us examine if there is no armature current if there is no input current to that armature so there is no uh, question of any production of armature flux so if there is no uh, armature flux in the mag uh, along with the magnetic field so only you can see in the air gap only magnetic flux only if we can see so there is no question of any interaction if there is no interaction among the fluxes then there is no question of any forces experienced by the armature so that is the reason so whenever armature conductor is experiencing or allowing some current through it now automatically there will be a armature flux once this armature flux established definitely there will be interaction between magnetic field and the armature flux because of this interaction of two different types of fluxes that armature conductor will experience a force that is a nothing but mechanical force it is going to experience so how much of mechanical force it will uh, it is going to experience means that will be decided by the how much of current the armature conductor is having so that how much of current means who will decide that current that current is nothing but it will be influenced by the or it will be decided by the input electrical energy so proportional to the input electrical energy now you can see some amount of mechanical energy so that mechanical energy we are going to tap or we can uh, we can experience across the armature terminals only it means that armature once that uh, armature conductor is having some current through it then immediately from there onwards once the moment of inertia of that armature is overcome then from there onwards the armature starts rotating in a particular direction so once that armature starts rotating means now already our electrical energy got converted into the mechanical energy how like this that electrical motor is a device which converts electrical energy into the mechanical energy so this is simply the principle of operation behind this electrical motor so clearly here also we have uh, clearly explained with the help of simple uh, diagrams this what is this ampere's right hand thumb rule how that conductor uh, current carrying conductor will produce a magnetic field that can be explained with the help of this and next thing uh, next thing is now let us uh, examine or let us observe this is nothing but our armature conductor this is our armature conductor so if this armature conductor produces its own magnetic field its own magnetic field now this will have its own magnetic field this is the magnetic field produced by this armature conductor and next one is these lines are nothing but these lines what we are representing these are nothing but the main magnetic field this is the main flux so because of this interaction what happens now there will be a huge density of this magnetic flux main fluxes now here see here the magnetic flux density is very weak this is nothing but the weak area this is nothing but it is a dense area so because of this what happens now all this uh, magnetic flux lines as we know that these are nothing but acts like a uh, magnetic cords or elastic cords because of uh, because of this elasticity nature this armature conductor it will be pulled in a particular direction now generally what could be the direction of uh, the mechanical force that armature conductor is going to experience means generally it will pull from high dense area to the weak den weak areas so that is the, that is the reason we have represented the force direction is like this so this is the direction of the force this armature conductor is going to experience so with the help of this also we can highlight the principle of operation of this particular dc motor now here uh, one important point here it is therefore if a conductor lies within a magnetic field so any conductor if it is lies in the magnetic field now there are two important conditions are there the motion of the conductor produces an electric current so this what it is a generator now in this generator also what happens in the electrical generator now we are we have to rotate that armature conductor at a particular speed now once it starts rotating now that motion because of that particular motion or once that armature conductor starts rotates then we can see some electrical current in the armature so that is nothing but the electrical generator principle now vice versa what happens when an electric current in the conductor if we are allowing some current to flow through the armature conductor now it will generate some motion or it will produce some uh, mechanical motion so this is nothing but it is called as a motoring action so it is nothing but it is simply we can say one simple statement that any dc machine any dc machine same dc machine vice versa you can operate only the thing is nothing but if you want to operate as a generator 
only you have to rotate that particular armature in a particular direction so you can uh, see some electrical energy across the armature or in other words suppose if you want to operate that as a dc motor then you give the electrical energy as input to the armature conductors then armature uh, will starts rotate in a particular direction so that is nothing but generating action and the motoring action so here the important point is when the armature of a dc motor rotates under the influence of driving torque so what exactly what do you mean by the driving torque means now already just now we have discussed that a conductor will experience a force in a particular direction so similarly another conductor on the circumferential lens will experience a force in this direction now here if it is a dot conductor this may experience a force like this so all the forces cumulatively if you are observing all the forces are in the same direction so this is nothing but it is a rotating body so perpendicular distance also matters here so if this is the individual force this is also individual force this is also individual force force into perpendicular distance which is nothing but the fisting force so that is nothing but this is called as a torque so this is nothing but it is a uh, rotating twisting force because of this force acting with respect to the perpendicular distance that is nothing but torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance of that particular radius of the armature so what is this radius of this armature means you can say as a r so force into perpendicular distance which is nothing but radius of radius of the armature is nothing but it causes a torque now that is torque is nothing but it is a twisting force that armature is going to experience so the because of this what happens under the influence of the driving torques the armature conductors move through the magnetic field and hence emf is induced in them as in a generator so electrical energy is converting into the mechanical energy so this is the first point so means into the armature we are inducing some amount of electrical energy yes now once this electrical energy is passing through the armature conductor then that armature starts rotates right first part now once that armature starts rotating then again because of the generating action what happens every armature conductor again will get some induced emf in it so that induced emf always in the opposite direction to the cos what is the cos the cos is nothing but the supply voltage so this voltage is nothing but this is called as a counter emf or this is nothing but the back emf so this back emf or counter emf is generating or this much of voltage it will be induced in the armature because of the movement of the armature conductors of course the movement of that armature conductor is because of the flow of armature current only now what is the flow of armature conductor why there will be armature current in the armature conductors means because this is a dc motor in the dc motor some amount of electrical energy we are applying so that electrical energy as a current we are applying to the armature so electrical energy is converting into the mechanical energy as when that armature conductor is carrying or allowing some amount of current through it it starts rotates yes so this is the motoring action once it starts rotates in a particular direction then again due to the generating action every armature conductor will induce some amount of emf now what is the direction of that induced emf that induced emf is always in the direction opposite to the supply voltage that is nothing but the cos this is nothing but the as per the lens law we can say that and what is this in the motor also some induced emf is generating as a generator principle so this is nothing but the, it is a counter uh, counter uh, kind of thing so because of this this is called as a counter emf or sometimes this is called as a back emf now even in the generator this is a major source for the induced emf and in addition to that in the uh, dc machine if you are operating as a dc motor as a generator the dc motor armature is also capable to produce some amount of counter emf uh, that is nothing but the back emf it is represented with the eb capital e suffix b so what is the formula for this eb and uh, what are the parameters it is going to influence this eb means again same as the induced emf in the generator now eg generated voltage as a generator this is also equal to the back emf this is called as a pi p n by 60 into z by a in the in our previous videos we have derived this expression for generating induced emf so as a generator so this is the this much of voltage you can see across the armature now this is a dc motor armature now now these two shaded portions are nothing but the these are the brushes 
this is going to collect the electrical energy from the armature and this is ia is nothing but this is the armature current and every uh, machine will have some internal impedance or internal resistance because it is a dc machine so that's why this is ria is nothing but the equivalent resistance that armature is having so separately we are uh, pulling out that particular resistance that internal resistance of this armature here i am representing ria some polarities uh, you can mark based on the supply voltage the supply voltage of course we can represent with capital b now don't confuse with this capital e and eb this eb is nothing but the back emf generated in the motor as a generating action so this is the armature current and this is the mechanical load and uh, coupling and this is the ia current this is the simple uh, armature equivalent circuit so now here the important point you have to remember that in the dc motor in addition to the induced emf as a generator reaction armature will also experience some torques so in the next uh, section we are going to discuss about how the torque it will be generated and uh, what are the influencing parameter for the torque and how many parameter in what way the torque will be influenced in the dc motor thank you for watching this video thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates